think that word, possibilities, is an amazing word. I think that um, the role of a coach, and particularly me with my clients, is to allow them to see things differently. Whether that's to see a blind spot, because we can't see our own blind spots, which is why a coach is so important, to help you to see other options or possibilities, as you say. I think it's really important that there could be something that's right there and you're one degree off. And having like a coach come in and just change the course of your direction can mean everything in terms of where you go. I mean, think about it like this. This is, this is the way I think about it with my clients. My client was going in that direction and there was a, an interception here where we saw things slightly differently. One degree, but over time, they end up in a completely different sphere. That's the power of the possibility. That's the power of the options. And that's why you know, coaches are so important. Mentors are so important because we're unable, we're unable to do that ourselves. You know? So that's what I believe. That's what I do with my clients and how I help them. I just, I just help them understand what else there is and how we can put those steps in place to get from A to B. And you know what? They wouldn't be a client of mine if they didn't take that and run with it. And I only work with people who I know are going to put the work in. I only work with people who are committed. And so when we agree as coach and client that that's going to happen, there's no questions asked. It happens. And there will be stumbling blocks, but you know, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm helping them through the process. So yeah, that's how I do that. With any new client, for me, it's about getting the sweet spot of their courage and commitment so like their their effort like i'm so keen to go like i've invested time and money i'm ready but also taking into consideration reality you know and um, this is something that i've i've actually helped people with this equation for the whole of my adult life starting out as a as a gym instructor and a personal trainer in the fitness industry it's always about like i'm ready to start i want it now i'm, I'm gonna do all these things i'm gonna prep all my food i'm gonna do all my exercise but it's sometimes too much too soon but the ambition's there and the energy and the effort is there, we can't squash that because that's great. But we also need to bring reality into play and understand what's actually gonna happen. So we need to pull back a little bit and find like, almost like an inverted U, we have to find that sweet spot and stay in that sweet spot as things change. And that's, that's the key. So with a new person, I would always explain that to them and I'd make sure that they understand that there's a step-by-step -step process and we only need to focus on step number one struggles so many i mean i'm proud of my struggles and i think it's a great position to take with struggles because they're going to happen anyway right um, human beings are stretched far beyond what they're capable of like there's so much that's distracting us there's so much that's stressing us out that we have to be like, i can't even protect my own son from the world like, i can't and if i if I actually if i try too hard i might make it worse so every single one of us needs to accept that struggle is a part of the whole thing it's gonna happen. We're in this and we're in deep. And so um, my own uh, struggles, I have serious in-depth conversations with myself. It's your own self-awareness is the biggest thing. If you're able to, I know it sounds strange, but if you're able to have a conversation with yourself, with the right voice in your head, and I might sound like a loony now, but I know that everyone has internal dialogue. It's the way that we work. If you're able to really think about things and ask yourself great questions such as, what can I do about this? What's really bothering me here? How can I change this? Rather than, why does this happen to me? Why didn't it work? Then we're able to see things differently. So yeah, anyone who's going through any struggle, like I've had financial struggles, I've had uh, time struggles, I've had family struggles with you know, having a young baby right in the middle of all this and another one on the way and you know, relationship struggles and then running a business whilst trying to pursue this coaching business. Also, I've got 10 staff members and gym, I've got 360 gym members. Like, we've, we've had some really quite serious and devastating things happen, uh, you know, in that, in that gym, uh, which I won't go into any detail about, but things that you just don't expect when you go into business. And so the struggle is very real. But what I like to do is always deploy this, this proverb, right? Fall down seven times, get up eight. Every time you fall down, you just get up. I know that's a cliche, but know this, and this is where maybe you've not heard this before. Every time you do get back up again, you're worth more. Your stock value is increased. 
You're worth more to someone who's going through the problem you've not got anymore. You're worth more. You're worth more as an employee because you've got a deeper sense of emotion. You're worth more. You're worth more in a relationship because you've built some self-awareness which next time you have a fight with your the missus or with your, with your fella, you're able to just really ask yourself what the hell's going on instead of fighting. So yeah, like embrace the, embrace the struggles. Mindset's everything. It is everything and uh, I like to think like you've got a little control center in your brain, your body's just being like told what to do and if you think about all the things you do with your body, so what do you do? You write with your body, you type with your body, you talk with your body, well all that's controlled in your mind. So the instructions that you give yourself come from here and your mindset is simply the settings that you have in your mind at that time. So if your mindset is congruent with the objective, you're going to succeed. If your mindset is conflicting with the objective, you're going to have unnecessary struggles. Not like the struggles we talked about before, but just the ones that you probably shouldn't have, like you didn't need to have those. So mindset is absolutely everything, and every single person who cares about their own performance, whether it's in health, business, or relationships, should do something to cater for their mindset, to grow their mindset. It could just be going for a walk with their favorite songs on, or it could be employing a coach to help them with it. But just going out there on your own and floating about is risky because if you do that, you're probably gonna end up unhealthy and unhappy because it's kind of the current. Like I said, we're stretched and stressed. And so one way we can make sure we stay on top is to develop our minds. It's, um, it's really important to have a healthy body as well as a healthy mind uh, and it attributes to the healthy business. Now, there are many successful people that you could say aren't in shape, that aren't healthy and that's fine. My, my argument is always this. How much more successful could you be with a bit more energy? How much more successful could you be with a bit more self-confidence? Now, I know that you're confident and you don't need to do that and that, but really, really, if you knew that there was, ev that everything you did, your motion in the world, your movements, represented your commitment, your self-respect, and I, you know, I'll go there in this, because if you're watching this video, then you know, you're here to get some kind of change, so uh, you've got to respect yourself equally uh, with your business and your health and your relationships. Like the three are like the main circles of life, if you like, and I guess anybody who's successful and could improve their health will be more successful when they do. So the first event that I did, which I had um, tickets available to buy, uh, I sold two tickets in like the first five minutes to people in Belfast, which I thought, right, this is it, this is gonna be easy. Um, if there's Belfast, people traveling on the airplane, then there's gonna be people that live down the road that are gonna to wanna to come, right? Um, it didn't happen, and uh, you know, I, I told that on stage just now, it didn't work. Five days went by, I didn't sell a single ticket, and I had to change my game plan. Now, when the tickets did start coming in, I think I, I sold about 18 tickets on the revamp, which brought the whole thing to 20, which was kind of like my minimum number for my first event, and it was relief. It was absolute relief. It was like, right, we've got it now. We're, we're in the game. It was almost like when you're a kid and it's raining outside and it's Saturday morning and the manager's like, the game's on. You're playing. And you're like, oh yeah, we're playing, we're playing, we're playing. It was like, right, it's gonna, it's gonna happen now. It's going ahead. Um, and it was a massive relief. And actually in the end, we added another 16 tickets in the follow-up, which is you know, really important in any business. The follow-up is essential. But yeah, that, that event will always be really special to me because it was the first time and, and uh, I was euphoric at the end, um, uh, yeah, it'll always have a very special place in my heart. Do you know what? If you'd have asked me what the next 18 months looked like six months ago, then I would have said, there's no limit to what the Super Self Summit can become. We can fill out hundreds. We can, we can go Tony Robbins on it. It can be huge, it can be massive, it can be all these great things. And then, you know what? Something's changed in me, and the answer to that question now is wherever I'm at, wherever I am in 18 months, I'll still be someone who can do that. Because I know I can do that. One day I'll do that, right? Maybe, maybe. And before I would have said yes. But here's the thing wherever I am in 18 months, I'm going to be happy, I'm going to have a lot of love around me, and I'm going to make sure that my family come first. Now, I'd rather be the man who, on his deathbed, spent a lot of time with his family, was surrounded by a lot of love, and could have filled a stadium, than the man who filled a stadium and could have had a lot of love around him. And that's a lesson I learned in the last six months, particularly with the second Super Self Summit. 
You know, it was a real bad experience, but necessary to realize that. And that is something you can read, watch. Like there's that motivation, it's there every day. And I was telling people things like that, but I fucking felt it. I, f I really felt that I was missing that. And it blindsided me because I thought, how can I, the coach, how can I, the coach, miss such an important lesson that I teach others? But man, I, f I felt it and that was what made it real. So in 18 months, I'll be doing whatever the market wants me to do, because I'm not in charge of that. But I'll never put my happiness and my family's happiness second to any 